Hello everyone and thanks for stopping by and taking a look at this video. If you're here today, you are like me and you have an E46 BMW that you adore and cherish and have a loving relationship with, I'm sure. Uh, and if you have a convertible like me, uh, you probably have run into the issue of your hydraulic fluid running a little bit low and uh, wondering how do I top that off? Do I have to go somewhere and pay them to do that or can I do it myself? Well, lucky for you, it's very easy to do yourself. Uh, it just requires a couple of tools and maybe 20 minutes of your time and you will be good to go. Um, but this isn't a permanent fix, however, if you have a leak, uh, that hydraulic fluid is coming out and going somewhere. So you should address that and see if you can find where the leak is and get it repaired at some point. But in the meantime, if you just need to top off your fluid, uh, this is this video will cover the uh, tools and procedures required to do that. But first, a little about the car. This is a 2004 BMW 330Ci. It is my favorite car I have owned so far, I think, out of the four I've had. Uh, it's just fantastic. It's a, a joy to drive. Uh, it is six-speed manual, as you can see. Uh, it has, I just crossed over to 111,000 miles uh, for 17, almost 18 years. That's pretty good, I think. Uh, it is not a ZHP, uh, but still it is a blast to drive. Uh, it's, I'm the third owner, so that's quite nice. Uh, it has the three liter engine, which is a joy to drive. It purrs like a kitten, uh, but it delivers power when you need it. Um, it's really just a great car overall. You know, these are really the ultimate driving machines as BMW claims to produce. So this video will cover, I believe all E46 convertibles. Uh, you may have some minor differences depending on your year. Uh, like I said, this is a 2004, so if you have an earlier one, it might be a little different. Or maybe if you have the six disc CD changer, which I don't, that might be a difference as well. But the majority of this video should be the same and you should be able to figure out the minor differences. All right, let's go over the tools that we will need to complete this job. So I have here everything I'm going to use. You don't really quite need all of this, but it makes it all a lot easier. So the first thing that I have that I think is useful for any job is a trim removal kit. This is really useful for really anything you're going to do. Uh, it helps you remove those little rivets that are a pain. It also helps you get the trim off if you wanna take the radio out or do anything like that. It's so helpful. Definitely get yourself one of those if you don't already have one. Uh, the next is you need some metric Allen wrenches. I can't remember what size it is. I'll tell you once we get there. Uh, then you need some CHF, uh, or just really any hydraulic fluid. Uh, I know this one is good to use. I think there's a few you can use. This Pentosin CHF 11S power steering fluid. Uh, I got that at AutoZone. Uh, also, same thing, I got this little funnel at AutoZone. It needs to be small like this. The neck needs to be really narrow uh, because the hole in the reservoir is pretty small. So this helps for sure a lot with that. You'll need some paper towels or wipes too because you're gonna spill a little no matter how careful you are. Uh, that helps to have those right nearby. Um, you don't have to have this. I just use it all the time because it's so handy. A little magnetic hardware holder to put like nuts and bolts in. Uh, you do need the, uh, you can use a wrench, but it's much better to have a socket set uh, and a ratchet. Uh, that helps a lot for this. There's one uh, nut you have to take off. I can't remember what size it is, but I'll tell you once we get there. All right, let's do it. So the first thing that you need to do is put your top down all the way and let it sit for at least like two or three minutes before you do this, um, preferably like a little longer. Uh, the reason being that when you use the top uh, and the hydraulic fluid, it kind of changes like consistency, I think, uh, and it kind of gets like foamy. So 
if you put the top down and let it sit, it gets back to its like natural state. So it's good to put your top down and let it sit. Um, that's not a problem for me. The top's pretty much always down and it's a beautiful day outside today. So my top's been down for well over an hour. So uh, once you have put your top down and let it sit there for a few minutes, it's time to go into the trunk. All right, let's go in. So the first thing you need to do is, of course, take everything out of your trunk, which I've taken most of the things out of my trunk, but I've left a few iconic things in there, such as my oil and my OBD2 scanner, because those are two essentials. Also, I have a sub, so I'll be taking that out here in a moment. So you probably won't have that, but take everything out of your trunk is the first step. Alright, now that we have everything out, uh, your trunk will have the trunk liner in right here. This whole thing, uh, it'll have a little handle right here that you just lift up and the whole thing should lift right out, no problem. Your next step is you have to take all of this out. So that's going to involve getting the trim removal kit to help you take these rivets out. There's a couple more rivets here. I'll show you all of them. And uh, that, then let's uh, then you gotta also take uh, this carpeting out as well. Uh, the um, reservoir is back behind here. So we've gotta take all this out to access it. So let's do it. All right, once you've gotten here and you've taken your trunk liner out, you should have something similar to this. So in mine, there are there's this one whole big carpet piece right here held in by one, two rivets. Uh, there's also this one plastic insert here. Uh, there's one plastic insert here. Uh, if you have the six CD changer, I think that might be mounted here. Uh, so you would have to, of course, disconnect that and take it out as well. Uh, so make sure you just follow basic, you know, do-it-yourself protocol where you note what goes where and maybe take a picture before and uh, put it back together the same way. Uh, so if you don't have any of that and yours looks like this, then that's even better. So the first thing you're going to do is use your trim removal tool, whichever you like, and uh, take this little uh, container out, whatever this plastic piece is out. So it has one rivet here, one, and two. So I just put them in the container they were in. Whoops, that was a horrible idea. So. They have, I'll show you, they have, they go in like this, they're two pieces. So you have this uh, little piece that stays in. So I always forget about it. So when you take the rivet out, you're taking this top piece out. Uh, so this is still in there. You actually have to then dig this out too. Or hold your finger over it as you take it out so it doesn't do what mine did and it fell down in here in the spare wheel well. I'll get it later. So take all that out and put it in there. And then gently take this out. It hooks into the plastic with a little hook here. So you have to kind of just wiggle it out. There we go. So you see it has, uh, it has these two pieces go in to these two holes. This piece is the last piece that when you set it into place, this part hooks into there. So when you put it back in, it's gonna be like that. Take the outer two pieces, they're gonna go through these holes. Then once you've got it in, set it down, and this piece here is going to hook back underneath there. So that's that one. Uh, the next thing you're going to need to do, I leave these in. You can take them out if you want. They're just held in by like, I think, yeah, six tabs on each, yeah, two, four, and then one on each side. Six tabs each, you can take them out, but it's honestly easier to just leave them in. 
Uh, one more thing you need to do, I forgot to mention it, is take this uh, lamp assembly out, which is very simple. There's just a little gray plastic tab on the other side of this light. All you do is you just squeeze it and pop it out. It's so simple. You can't mess it up. There's no connector or anything. Just the contact here this is what does it. So very simple to take to disconnect that. Set that to the side. Uh, all right, our next step is going to be to take these two uh, gray rivets out. So again, using your rivet removal tool or your trim removal tool, whatever you have, a screwdriver if you don't have any of that, just kind of gently pry it under there. Keep in mind this is carpet, so don't be too hard, don't tear it, don't rip it. So these are the same, they come out in two pieces. So keep them together for storage, put them with your others. They're gray on mine, so it's obvious which is which. Same with this one, get this one out. Same thing, got that one. All right, so we're almost there. We really are, it's pretty simple. Uh, our next step is you're gonna wanna note, like take a picture or just note how your, how your carpet goes in around the seams, which piece is on top, which piece is below. So the piece we're taking out is below this next piece on mine. And down here, I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's another piece it connects with. Note how this piece is beneath that piece. You want to put it back the same way. Or maybe it's above. I don't know. Maybe I've put it back in the wrong way. But just do it the same way it is. Or it really probably doesn't matter that much. But I like to do it the same way. So we're almost there. Our last step is, uh, after you note how it all goes in, uh, we kind of just gently pry it out. So I like to start at one corner and kind of work it out gently, very gently, slow. If it's not working, don't bend it too much. Maybe try from another spot. Keep in mind this is like 20 years old and you don't want to buy more of it. It's really expensive if you can even find it. Okay, so really gently, kind of just taking it out. Work it all around, all around, it all pops out. There's this little hook here that I think you can see. Can you see that? Yes, you can. So it, it just pops out. We're almost there, okay. And be gentle. If you get it right, there we go. And then you can Take it all out in one piece, set it to the side. Now it's a good time to vacuum it. Now is also a good time to clean in here if there is any stuff like tree seeds. I can't believe that. How did that get there? All right, so here you go. This is the pump right here. Uh, we're almost there, real simple. So let's get the tools we need next, which is going to be the ratchet in the socket. Okay, here's a better look at the reservoir. So you can see here it, it is, it's encased in this foam. Uh, it's in two pieces. There's a top piece that's uh, held on by this nut right here onto this bracket that's onto the body here. So this top piece that's connected to this metal here is that and then there's just this foam piece that the whole tank slides into. So to take this off we are going to use our 13 millimeter socket and we are going to take it off. You can use a wrench if you must. That would be tedious but it would work. This is tedious enough. All you have to do is loosen it too, by the way. You don't have to take it all the way off. I wouldn't recommend taking it all the way off. I would just loosen it enough to, you see it slides right out? It slides right out of that bracket. So when you put it back, it's gonna slide right back in. That's all you need to do. So next, we can take that top part off. Remember it's two pieces, so just very gently careful because it's only held on by a little bit of foam all, like all the way around 
we have to go open this way. Maybe, maybe pull it out a little, that helps. And like open that up and go around and like gently pull it out. You see mine's already torn, so in two places, wow. So it's time for a new one. Does it have a part number? It sure does. I wonder if you can even get it. I'll have to check later. So be careful. Set that part to the side once you have it off. Next step is we're gonna slide this part right out. Okay. So you can see, uh, here it is. This is the convertible top hydraulic fluid reservoir right here. And you can see this little mark, this little thing here. Uh, this is how you measure it. So what you do, and I apologize, I uh, part of this video got deleted when I recorded it first, so I'm coming back to do this part so it's already full, but pretend it's not. So you're going to want to stand it up flat like this, and mine was down about here in the middle, right about at that mark right there. You want it to be, when it's flat like this, it needs to be anywhere in this little window from the top to the bottom. Uh, so I filled it like all the way up to the top, as you'll see uh, in a moment. And uh, then uh, and you want yours to be just somewhere in this, in this window. So ideally when you top it up, off, you want it to be near the top of this. So the next thing we're gonna do is use our number, uh, well first thing, not, not that, safety first, cleanliness first. <sighs> Put a paper towel underneath here to protect against any dripping and uh, get another one for the uh, screw here. So it's a number five uh, metric Allen wrench and it's this screw here. It's usually on pretty tight so um, uh, uh, there we go and then yeah, you see some dripping coming out. That's why you want this extra paper towel. It needs to be handy. So take it all the way out. There we go. Excellent. Okay, I just leave it on there. Wipe this off a little. Get it clean. And I just, you don't really need to do anything. You can just set that over here in the corner because uh, you're just going to put it on a little bit later. And uh, so now it's time to go and get the uh, hydraulic fluid and the funnel. Uh, this is where it gets fun. Okay, I am back with the fluid and with the funnel. So, like I said, this is where it gets fun. So I'm going to get another paper towel that I'm gonna put like underneath all this. So it's good to like kind of bring it down so you can get a better angle to pour. So I usually put my funnel, I don't put it like all the way in. I, I leave a little bit of like air for it to like flow in. Cause if you block it off like this, it, it's, it's the same way like if you try to pour a like a drink out of a bottle slowly, you can pour a smooth stream, but if you pour it too fast, it's like glug, 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 glug. It's gonna go everywhere if you if you do that. So do like a nice little slow stream as you pour it in there. So get your hydraulic fluid, open it up, be careful. This would be, I cannot imagine spilling this. All right, so you're gonna pour very slowly, very, very slowly. I'll try to do it so you can really see it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so just a little, and then let it go down slowly. So, and then we're gonna do it in little bits like that. And watch the hole where it's coming out to make sure that you're not overflowing. If it starts overflowing, grab your paper towel, pour slower, or maybe wait longer between little pours. So you're just going to pour like a decent amount in there, but not too much though because it's hard to take out. I've never had to do it uh, and I don't want to do it.
no spilling yet. I'm surprised. Usually I spill at least a little. I have to do this maybe once every maybe two months during the season when I'm really using it. Maybe that's enough. It's better to like stop and check. So let's do that. So first things first, kind of tilt this vertically to let as much of it kind of drip out into your reservoir as possible. Okay, looks like we're not dripping anymore. Uh, oh, and don't let go of this either. You know, don't set that down. You don't want to not want to knock it over. All right, so I'm just gonna actually set it out here on the ground behind me, just to be so careful. All right, so I'm gonna kind of wipe this off a little, get this clean again. Don't want any of that fluid to stay on there. So get it all off. Okay, lay this flat so it doesn't pour out anywhere. You don't want that either. And to check, we're gonna lay it flat and see how our line is looking oh, I did pretty good so it's it's almost to the top I'm gonna do a little more uh, just cuz I, I don't want to have to do this again soon cuz it's it's easy but it's a little bit of a chore so I'm gonna try to maximize every time I do this so I'm gonna go a little bit more not too much but a little bit Okay, so again, nice and slow. Just be smart about this, use your brain. All right, maybe like one more little. Okay, ooh, well, that might, I hope that wasn't too much. We'll see, won't we? So again, don't spill your fluid. I'm setting it behind me on the ground. All right, hopefully we're done with this. I'm just gonna be done with it because I don't feel like doing it again. So clean this all off. When you're done, take your uh, funnel inside and wash it out with soap and water and let it air dry. Alright, so our next step is to put everything back together. Well, not everything, just this. Just put your screw back in. Okay, make sure you don't cross thread it. It's not very easy to cross thread, but make sure you don't do it. Okay, you don't have to like go crazy on it because we're going to test it, remember. Alright, let's see. I forgot to check and see where we are. Okay, so I'm a little above the line. I, I think it's going to be okay, though, because you'll see why here in a minute. All right, so I'm just going to set it here where it would normally go. Nice and gentle. So the next thing we got to do is close the trunk so that we can use the top. And we're going to uh, close the top, let it sit for a couple minutes, uh, and then we're going to open the top and let it sit again for a couple minutes, then get ourselves an accurate reading. So let's go and do that. All right, so I went ahead and put the top all the way up, waited about two minutes, put the top all the way down, and it's been maybe three or so minutes. I really uh, think that's enough time. So let's take a look now, let's measure it. So if I put it flat, yeah, you see it's a little lower than it was before. It was above that a little. Now it's perfectly at the top of the circle. Like amazing, I'm so excited. This is perfect. This is, I think the best one I've ever done. So uh, now I'm good and it's time to put everything back. So I'm gonna tighten this a little more, first of all, because now 
uh, it's like ready to go and it's gonna stay that way for like a couple months now, hopefully. So tighten that quite tightly. Give it another good wipe. Make sure everything's off of it. Oh, don't need that anymore. Next step is going to be to put it back in its foam thing. So get your foam thing. It's obvious which way it goes. Like you really can't mess it up. Slide it in all the way uh, as much as it'll go. There we go. Then this one's the tricky one. You have to kind of this goes it out so this goes like around this it's hard to get in there the metal things go on top oh gosh I always feel like it's not right but I think it is is that right okay sure all right so yeah that's pretty good then uh, slide your nut back onto there make sure it's nice and secure then get your 13 millimeter. Okay, yeah, you gotta hold, you have to hold this whole thing here while you do it. Whoops. So it doesn't move. And get it pretty tight. It doesn't have to be like obscenely tight, but get it like kinda tight to where it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, reasonably tight, right? Not going anywhere. That's tucked in there nice and tight. We're good to go. Now we get to put all of the trim back in. So let's zoom out a little and do that. All right, so now to put the trim back in, we're just gonna do the reverse of everything we did previously, so. Grab your carpet. This is the hardest, not the hardest, but the most like precise part. The easiest part to like pinch your carpet in a funny way or mess up somehow like that. So just be like, if you're meticulous like me, you'll be really careful the way you put it back in. So you just kind of get it generally there and, the, and then you can fine tune it. So, uh, remember this went under, so I'm gonna try to get that. There we go, under. Get under. under the seal here. Up. There we go. Now get this in. This part doesn't really want to for some reason. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's tricky. You really gotta sure it gets back where it was there we go all right awesome you hear that kind of click into place there that's what you want so there we go back behind there mine just has this little part that sticks out probably from doing this so many times and not doing it right the first time so I just kind of live with that Tuck this part behind the plastic there all right like this goes under that. Okay, there we go. And pop this. So then I popped that back into place, that little uh, hook. Plastic's back into place there. I just gotta make sure, look underneath this, this convertible top lid here and make sure that it's flush all the way on all the corners, underneath everything. Look all the way around. See, I missed a spot right here. I gotta get that. Oh, come on. There, excellent, you hear the click? So make sure, go all the way around. Make sure it's in everywhere. Yep, I think we're good. All right, excellent. Next step is to put your two rivets back in. So get them, hopefully you haven't lost them. Uh, this is a, can be a little tricky. The hole here has to line up with the hole in the frame. So once you line it up, 
pop it back in, nice and easy. Same thing for this one, line it up, pop it back in. Done, that's the hardest part. Now, I have to fish out that part that popped way down here earlier. Oh no. Oh, this is gonna be tough. All right, hold on. All right, oh, thank goodness, there we go, got it. All right, so same thing with this. Uh, you're gonna get your rivets and you're also gonna get your little compartment. Get them set up. All right, so remember the this has to go in, these two have to go in, then this latches into place. So get the two hooks in there, there we go, now this one, the second one can be tricky, come on, there we go, got, oh, nope, not yet, come on, it, you can reach from behind, it kind of helps, there we go, got it, okay, then that slides out into place and locks, great, almost there, all right, then put these back in, Alright, and you're almost done. You can put your light back in. It's very simple. It's the same as taking it out, except you just pop it in. That's literally it. Alright, uh, last step for you is to put your trunk liner in. Uh, for me, it's to wire back in my sub. Excellent, I think we are ready. So, the final test will be, does the top go up normally? And do we get rid of that horrible loud sound? So, let's check it out. gosh, it is so hot today. Oh, let's get some air conditioning. Well, anyway, there you have it. That is how you refill the hydraulic fluid for your convertible. Hopefully, you can do it in about half an hour, and it's pretty simple. I would say, like, one to two out of five on difficulty. Like, you really don't have to be that experienced to do this. It's pretty easy. It, uh, simple you know if I wasn't doing the video I could have had it done in 15 minutes honestly probably so uh, I hope this helps uh, let me know in the comments if you have anything else you'd like to know how to do on your E46 I can show you uh, let me know if you uh, like this video like comment and subscribe thank you for watching